A senior developer tells the truth about AI and tech. Hello, I'm Chris Athanas. I'm a KMP developer. Tech support, so they're coming out for sure. <laughs> Tuesday, right? You see, you hear this a lot. Um, today, I'm going to be uh, reacting to. I haven't watched this yet. I haven't previewed it, but I looked at the overview and it looks pretty good. From the senior developer Overstack, go oh, give him a like and subscribe. He's got 156 subscribers. He's putting his stuff together. He's got a nice mic setup. He's better than my mic setup, <laughs> and uh, he doesn't have a lamp that's going off crazy. He, but that, you know, be very careful. Better be careful you do business with over there in, in China. Okay, let's just stop with waffling. Get on to it. Is it really worth getting a job in tech in 2025? Every day yeah. it seems like there's a new CEO saying I'll never hire another software engineer or a new video saying that AGI is just around the corner. After yeah. more than 14 years in the tech industry myself, it's safe to say that a lot has changed recently. So I just yeah. give an honest review of what it's really like to work in the modern tech industry today. So he's, he got in when the Zerp started. So he's only seen the up, 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 it'll go on forever. Like they always, they always say that, by the way, they always say that it's going to go on forever. Whatever's happening, the current things are going to continue on, be worse than it is or better than it is forever. And that's always what they say. Now, with the ZERP, it was like 15 years. Usually it's about seven, six, seven to let it run. But this one doubled that. I don't know why, but they just did. Here, let's get let's, let's. Yeah. First up, there's no doubt that it's definitely made me more efficient. AI is highly capable of performing. Yeah, more, more productive. I don't know about more efficient. Maybe maybe more efficient because of the easy to, instead of looking, going, going, in, going in mentally abused. And emotionally abused by going on Stack Overflow and asking a question or looking stuff up. Yeah, I guess, okay, that'd be more efficient. Okay, well, I'll give that to him. Low level tasks and also taking away some of the grunt work and the repetitive tasks. For yeah. example, one thing I love to do is write unit tests with AI. You can write. Yeah, yeah, it's good for that. And then ask you. But, but you got to know what the test is doing and that it's actually semantic and it makes sense. It's not just running some weird, crazy stuff. It has to be, has to make sense. But yes, it is great for making little test suites and test cases and stuff. It is pretty good for that, but you got to know what it's making. Just like, oh, make the test. No, that's not, no, no. I mean, it'll make the test, but you got to go look at it, read it, make sure it makes sense with the other suite that you have. And you're not doing too much of it because let's face it, going back and making an update and then having to go fix all the damn tests that are all redundant or just the same thing or not testing anything relevant. That stuff's not helping. The AI to implement the tests, or you can go from a TDD approach, write all of the tests, and then ask it to implement the function based on those. Either way, it takes a ton I mean, of work away from you. I mean, okay, so he's mostly talking about back end work. On front end stuff, it's not quite the same. We don't get to do TDD with a UI. Okay, the other parts of it, yes, where the parts that we can do TDD, the all the a API access stuff, yes, we're gonna try and do that. But we can't really. I've not seen a good example of how you do TDD with UI stuff. So it's a different style where we're we're gonna try to write some code and we're gonna help the, the AI is gonna help us write that code for to, to describe the AI the UI. We're gonna go tweak it, change it, modify it, and all kinds of padding values and stuff that's in there. It's never just straightforward. Let's keep going. Some of the more repetitive work that could take up hours of time. And this is fantastic for those low level tasks. But you will notice that when you start to ask True. for more complex things or push the AI into a corner, when yeah. it has less data to work with, yes. it really starts to hallucinate. For example, yeah. if you're Bad. working on a fairly obscure API. It's super annoying too, because it's really like, it doesn't give you a confidence score. It hasn't given you a confidence score so far. It's just like, yeah, I can't do it. Or here's some bullshit. You go figure it out. If it's working, like I was trusting you to go figure it out, buddy. Like I can go figure out stuff on my own, right? So it's like the bullshit shift meters has to stop you guys gotta quit with that shit and you're asking it how to implement a certain feature it might produce code that uses a function that just doesn't exist and you'll yes. see that immediately you'll see the code it produces and you'll think well i know that won't work yes i know that function doesn't exist but let's just try running it anyway see what happens and inevitably it doesn't work so you go back say right. hey you hallucinated give me some more code and then it just hallucinates again and again and again right right and right it just, it just keeps saying bullshit 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 like yes sir i'll do it I mean, without saying I might not be able to do this part. I can't do it. I can't figure it out. I'm in, a, I'm in a pickle. I am. In a, I'm, in, I'm in a hole. I don't know where to get out. I've come reached the limits. It's like, no, no, I'll just keep writing stuff and you'll have to go keep figuring it so we can play this game all day. Just notice that because you pushed it into that corner and it has no training set to work from, right. it just sort of starts to make things up. But I can completely understand yeah. why as someone getting into the tech industry today or if you're a junior engineer, you might be worried because you might be working on some of these more low level tasks. Yeah. Things that AI is fantastic at. Bootstrapping projects, writing unit tests, even writing some pretty decent front end UI is also yeah. a solved sort of thing. But as I mean, it's a good starting point. I mean, it's a good way to create the shell, but you still have to think the human has to put the design together about what we're putting on the screen, why we're putting it here, how does this fit in with everything else? 
that stuff the AI is just never going to be able to be because it's so varied depending on the use case. It doesn't know who your user is. It doesn't know. We do. That's where we have. That's where we come in. We do the curating and we do the and we and we direct it and we tell it what we need and it'll do that stuff, fill that stuff in. I don't know if it's ever going to be capable of having the full conversation that you have to have with people because people don't know what the hell they want. People are like, oh yeah, we'll just define. We use the. It's like yes, but defining the problem. Is the problem figuring out what, what first of all what the problem is, really, and then defining a solution that addresses that problem in a way that's cost efficient and doesn't that we can get in the middle of. I don't know what to tell you about that. Like we're trying to, we're trying to solve problems cheaper, faster, more fun than currently available. This is what we're doing in software. We're trying to put people out of work. I know this is a this is a controversial take, but we're taking somebody else's lunch when we're doing these things so it has to be better faster cheaper more fun or better fit to whatever thing that the, the customer you've decided to go after as you start to improve your skills you'll notice more and more ai is not gonna be able to figure out. that stuff out there's too much too much old human soft stuff and if you try and approach software engineering from the perspective of the prompt and write all of your code through prompts it might make you feel more efficient in the short term Yes. But the second you get it is it is they scared the shit out of us. <laughs> they scared us pretty good when they first started doing it because it was the way it was putting it out there. Yeah, then you start trying, but you push it hard enough to do the deeper stuff, which is what I just talked about. It's like, what are you what are you talking about? I have no idea. What do you mean? <laughs> you need to understand the code that was written. Definitely. So of yeah, that's the thing I see happening. Is like I think Kotlin is pretty close. It's pretty close to like what current the current UI, current tool sets, current everything like. That having as much flexibility without crafting it over so the AI can write code for you that's readable and understandable and that you can then modify later. And then not some crazy other like other language or other syntax. It's just, it's really condensed down for the use case of doing mobile apps and backend development. It's pretty, it's pretty freaking nice. Like, so that's like, I don't think you can get it smaller than that and still get the flexibility that we need to, to, to address all these human issues that in the way they want to be addressed wrote the code or the AI wrote the code, you still have to understand it. So you still have yeah. to develop your skills. In fact, there've been some studies recently that indicate AI doesn't increase developer efficiency at all. And I think that's where it's really getting. Yeah. It's all about those high level tasks that you really need to understand. So right. AI is great for taking away a lot of the boring work. You gotta know the edge, where that edge is between what the human, whether well, this human soft stuff and this logical tool, like it, you have to get super specific and you you're better have some way of dealing with edge cases. And the software. So where is that? Where is that? Where's the edge of that? That's our job, right? We're to figure out where the edge is at. What can we? What's possible to be done? And what? What's kind of silly to do? Or is it? What's a new thing we haven't tried yet that that makes sense for this particular problem set? Is where is that? Work a lot of the repetitive tasks and allowing you to focus on more of the fun stuff. And in fact, it has made software engineering more fun again. Yeah, it for sure. Cleared my head and allowed me to agree because just avoiding Stack Overflow. He's just talking about staying out of Stack Overflow because that place is mentally abused. That's emotionally abusive site. You'll get you get spanked hard. I mean, sometimes justifiably. I can get it. Yeah, but other times, like this is abusive. There should be like a levels or something like not this number thing and not your know, you know, pugilism. <laughs> it's just a junk pile of all kinds of random facts about stuff that may or may not work. The high level complex things. So are jobs at risk? What I, say, can Maybe. You... I think there is definitely risks for more of the entry level jobs. And I understand why that would be a concern for people coming into the industry today. Yeah. But as you start to become more experienced, AI just becomes another tool in your tool belt. You Correct. still have to understand the code that you're writing. Yes. And you still have to be able to deal with production bugs and adding features to all of the code. That works. Yes. Production bugs, adding features. The AI is not equipped to help. But wouldn't it be nice though? Wouldn't it be cool if they had an AI that would go through and like at least show you where the code that's working, why it's breaking, what happened, when, where? At least they can hunt it down for you and give you some more use cases, reproduce it for you. That would be awesome. I, I'll go try and fix it, but if you, you maybe you can reproduce it for me. Go throw a thousand cases at it and just figure it out from the bug report. That'd be awesome. But we're not there yet. Produce. I've got a fairly optimistic view on the situation. 20 years ago, it took an entire team of developers just to build a fairly basic website by modern right. standards. You needed a database guy, a front end guy, a back end yes. guy, yes. someone that just does the UI. But today, yes. with modern. Because the tools were not meant to talk to each other until we got more people involved and a more open source and an API and a public and some more standards and some people getting all getting uh, dethroned from with proprietary solutions yeah it took a long time for that to happen yeah
and tools we have people like myself a full stack software engineer that can build the entire thing as an individual but that doesn't mean that the amount yeah. of jobs in tech have reduced in fact they've drastically increased so yeah. as we've become more capable we've also become more ambitious and the demands of a modern software exactly. engineer have increased in line with that capability and i think mm -hmm. the same is true for ai we're not at risk of being replaced by ai but you are at risk of a developer with ai replacing you if yeah if you're like i think what he's trying to say is if, if you're just you if you're just focusing on one tool and think you have a little moat there with that's that one thing now that's that's gone <laughs> that's gone but everyone's kind of everybody's kind of known that i mean that's kind of one of the main things ai this ai tool sets has shown people is like you the master of one space it's not it's because we we have more access to these tools about how, how to help us out with figuring out these problems They're, it's not as critical to be a super master inside of each domain and the only reason i know this is because i'm an android developer and i did a couple of ios apps in the last year and a half or so with using these tools to help write them and it was so nice compared to what it usually is uh it's just a nightmare so i was able to release several apps to the ios store that i never took a course on ios development uh, i watched some youtube video, a few youtube videos but mostly i let the ai help me out i kind of know what i wanted and i kind of knew a little bit of details about how iOS is structured because it's very similar to all the other ones, like with the web and with the Android, similar in a lot of ways. But there were some things that were different. It was like, okay, well, that let me out. And it's actually, actually iOS development compared to Android is so much nicer. Like a little jealous because they definitely have an easier time with the Android stuff is so crafty and obtuse and just overdone, over-engineered and or engineered in these odd ways. Anyway, I keep going. If you're not willing to upskill and move with the current trends, then you will definitely fall behind. Yeah. Of course, a lot can upskill. change. Upskill. Maybe. The AI lets you upskill. Yeah, that's for sure. So in that way, it is pretty fun, but it, everyone's now expected to have all this stuff. So, but I've seen it's all, for, it's because of this, because of this integration now, the, the moats of these separate moats with these, these companies were having to defend. I think they're going to stop defending them and work, go to more standards and figure out a different way to, different way to have a competition because they're not gonna they don't have a moat <laughs> we will get to agi in the next five years and the models can completely reason but at that point it's not just well, software and that's sci-fi i we've i've talked about this in other videos i don't think we're gonna see agi with our lifetimes because let's just face it let me i'm gonna say it again if they let us have agi which that's like a state level government actor type of stuff you can create a humanoid robot not only to program stuff, but to do all kinds of other things, if you know what I'm saying, <laughs> and become a real problem. Uh, uh, yeah, so that's why that I don't think we're ever going to, if ever AGI ever is achieved, whatever that is, they're never going to let just regular people at it, no. Engineers at risk, it's literally every knowledge worker in the world at risk. So I'm yeah. to say at the moment, in many areas, it's made my job so much easier. It yeah. allows me to focus on more important tasks. And I think that's how it's also going to stay for the next few years. Yeah, more important tasks, more human tasks, the more curation tasks, the more stuff that takes nuance and style and taste and art and uh, context and understanding and being relatable to your customer and realize what they're trying to actually do and be empathizing with them. All that stuff that the AI is just never going to be able to do. All right. Um, give me a like and subscribe. Go give him a channel, his channel over stacked like and subscribe. We'll give it a link in the bottom here. And uh, I will talk to you guys soon.